Hello, everybody. Like Coach said here, my name is Joey Lato. So I'm currently the offensive coordinator, offensive line coach at Elmhurst University down in Illinois. A little bit of my background. So um, I am originally from Illinois. I did spend a long, long time in Wisconsin. So I played fullback at Lakeland College, which is now Lakeland University in Sheboygan. Um, I ended up staying there and GA in there. I coached the linebackers for three years. Then I left after I finished, uh, got my master's, and I coached for two years at St. Norbert College up in Dupier, Green Bay there. So there I coached D-line and then running backs. So I've kind of been all across the board. After that, I ended up coming back to Lakeland, and that's when I coached O-line for three years, where I know a lot of the same guys you guys know with Colin Bruton, Eric Tresky, those are my guys. Tyler Wellman, who's over at Trine now. A lot of the same connections with a lot of Wisconsin guys. After that, when Eric Tresky left uh, Lakeland to go on to Wisconsin Lutheran to become the head coach, I chose to stay and I was promoted offense coordinator and then COVID hit, right? So kind of went through that time period with no season there. I ended up leaving when I was at um, St. Norbert. I met Pat McAvoy, who some of you guys may know. He was at Stout, he was at St. Norbert. He's kind of all over the place uh, where he gave me the opportunity to leave and come to Elmhurst, get back to Illinois where I was from and work with him. Um, so I coached the spring season there during the COVID, COVID spring season there. Uh, coaching the offensive line, and then Coach McAvoy left right before the fall season. So kind of thrown into the fire right before July here, right before camp. I was promoted offense coordinator um, and kind of had the, the tough challenge of taking over in the CCIW and then not being able to change any of the formations or any of the names, right, because we're a couple weeks away from, from starting camp. So it uh, wasn't the ideal first season over there at Elmhurst, which leads me to all of this is why we ran so many trick plays, right, kind of taking over. We struggled offensively, and, I mean, we ran probably two or three a game, I know. Obviously, Carthage and Carroll and some guys are in here, so we will see you guys a little bit on film. But it became a point where when I was at Lakeland, we were a 10 personnel spread team, right? We were throwing RPOs, we were throwing bubbles, we were running mid zone, um, and, and we were very successful. And it's obviously different in the NAC than it is in the CCIW. So that was what I knew offensively, and that was what I tried to bring. And obviously, it's a different game. I mean, we didn't have the biggest kids, we didn't have the biggest size, um, so we struggled a little bit. I got there, our tight end was our best kid. Hard to be a 10 personnel team when your tight end's your best kid. Big physical blocker, big, can catch, really great kid. So uh, we adjusted, we made changes. We were listening to Joel early on, right? You gotta be able to change based on your personnel. So with that, you'll see, I'll kind of explain everything. It's not just trick plays. I try to show you how we set it up, but we went a ton of two back sets, as you just saw on, on the Carthage presentation with two true running backs. Uh, we went a lot of misdirection, a lot of reverses, a lot of throwbacks, sprint out stuff, anything that we could do to try to put some points on the board. So. My goal is hopefully you guys can take one or two plays away and, and implement them into your offense. But at the end of the day, you got to try to put points on it. You got to adjust based on what you got. So that's the basis of my presentation. I'm very laid back and calm. So at any point, stop me, ask questions, get everything answered for you guys. All right, so like I said, starting with two true running back sets. Um, so this is something that we did at Lakeland uh, when I was with Eric Tresky. So these are two true running backs. Again, it was different. We had 2,000 yard backs, two kids that could run four fours, four fives, both legit, legitimate uh, running backs. But we're running what I said, like I said, I run mid zone. You guys may call it whatever you want. Uh, where that front side tackle is kicking out. So our read is front side B gap, back, uh, front side A gap, back side A gap are kind of our reads. And obviously we're reading that back side end there. This just becomes then triple, right? If the quarterback pulls it at the end crashes, it just becomes triple. And what you should be in the next clip, we don't run everything correctly as I show you here, but we should be pitching off then the safety that should be coming down. If that makes sense. Your base triple option just out of a different look. All right, so again here, we run it. He ends up pulling it. Ideally, this quarterback should be able to outrun that D end, right? And then we should be pitching off the safety here. Obviously, we do not. This is our backup quarterback. But... Again, just showing you how we get to our trick plays. This was something we had a ton of success with at Lakeland. Allowed us to do a little bit of different things at Elmhurst, control the box a little bit with some motions, but not the most ideal thing for us. All right, so this is the next version of that where you're pre-snap moving that kid out. Our H was our more athletic kid that could also play receiver. So we're motioning him out, essentially bubbling him first and see what happens, right? A few things will happen. Maybe that Mike will go with. Maybe he'll stay in the box. That's what we want to read off, and you can either throw it Again, just like you would at any RPL, we're just throwing bubble off of it out of a different look. <clears throat> so this is the first clip here. You'll see when we motion him, right, this kid gets clearly out of the box. Obviously, he was already a little bit out of the box. He's going to go out even more. Control it, control it. We know 
Everyone knows if you're in the CCIW, we picked up a transfer kid in the spring. He lit it up. This was that kid. They were going to keep eyes on him, leaving us a very light box, which allows us obviously to get up and get a very light box and control the, control the box a little bit, have some success running the ball, which then leads us to throwing out of this look. So it's going to be the same look, but here we throw it. Right, you can see right away, read key blitzes. Should be really obvious read for our quarterback. This is the kid we're trying to read. He comes, he goes, we're throwing immediately. All we got to do is try to get two blocks out here. Good, shouldn't be anything too crazy for anyone. Your base stuff, triple option, your base RPOs that we run. So then we go into our last game here. Right, so this was, now this becomes the trick play. Same look here. Now it's an automatic keep for the quarterback. He's essentially just faking with that running back and he's immediately pitching to the H in this scenario, okay? Obviously he's going out there and the running back should be reading it, but we know we've ran this for nine weeks straight and this safety flies down and makes a play almost every single time. As you'll see on film, safety and corner, everybody flies up and he tosses it over them for a touchdown. Second play on offense to start the game. Right, so that's your traditional halfback pass essentially, but we ran this play, we ran this look so many times became really easy for us to do it. Again, automatic pitch. We keep the tight end in, so now, now we're not reading that end anymore. Tight end staying in on that end. You can see right away, everybody's flying. Ideally, I want him to throw it here, right? Safety comes down, hit the, the bird here. He ends up throwing to the outside, but still ends up working out all right for us. Good there. All right, just again, this is just another look. Um, let's go on to here. Another look out of our two back set. So just trying to create misdirection again, disguise eyes. We motion out H, line up in two back, control the box, motion them out, get guys going the other way to run your slip screen back the other way, right? Not necessarily a trick play here, but again, just getting eyes moving, trying to do different things. Two back, motion them out, get eyes going to our running back. End up throwing it back the other way for the slip screen. Obviously, it helps. Our two linemen here, if you guys, obviously, should be a lot of O-line guys in the room. They get out there. They both get huge pancake blocks, real physical. Allow your running back to do your thing. Hopefully, our tight end does. Yep. So, we do two. We do two sets. Get them up field, throw by. Tackles going out. Guards going angle. Guards going, or sorry. Tackles going out. Guards going up. Center is going up, and then the backside guard is doing rat kill, looking to clean anything up. But it should be one, two, throw by. Again, this, the back that was in there was special. This kind of led to a lot of our stuff. The kid tight end that's holding up the first down sign and the running back that you just saw there, we lost both them week four. Those are obviously our two best players, so it comes more and more difficult. You got to keep adding new things in. I will say, too, I've never been a trick play guy until this year. The more new stuff you're putting in, the more exciting stuff, it really does excite the kids and gets them to buy in, keeps them excited at practice. They, you see them call it in the game. They're all about it. All right, passing. So again, these aren't necessarily trick plays here. I, I took my two best athletes, freshman receiver, sophomore receiver, our two fastest kids. We put them in the two running backs in the backfield, and we either threw to them out of the backfield or we'd shift and motion out of there just to get matchups that we wanted with our two best kids. So it's just a few examples of that. This look, I mean, if you know anything about the CCIW, we see a ton of cover four, right? It's a base look that we're gonna see against us. We do see a little bit more man, just because we don't necessarily have guys that are gonna win man beater routes. So this is my cover four beater, where we're getting switched with the verts. We have our fastest kid on the field, working up, working over the backer and trying to get to the middle of the field here. Uh, that's who we're looking to throw to. We're expecting this coverage, we're expecting this look. You'll see us again, this would have been the first drive. Oh, we got the annotations on. We don't want that. All right, so as you saw that note, our receiver does screw this up a little bit. We're trying to hit the running back out of the, back, out of the backfield here, up the middle of the seam. This kid is supposed to go here, right? Pull the safety with. He does a, pulls a selfish move and runs inside, pulls the safety with him. We still end up hitting this, but this should be our fastest kid, middle of the field over here against Wesley. And we still end up completing it, get a big completion, but because he wanted to run inside, brought the safety with him. But again, just trying to create matchups, getting our fastest kid on a linebacker, and then trying to get cover four beater. All 
All right, both these plays are shifts. Again, so this would be a matchup thing here. We're lined up in two back. We're gonna shift both these kids out. These are our two best kids. We can control where they line up, where they go. The kid that we wanna pick on is their safety number 42. We know that we, based off film, that he's a kid that we can outrun. He's a kid that gets confused easily and switches. So this is your base switch route, pick route that you see from everybody. And obviously he gets confused, wide open, easy touchdown. But again, I think the motion, getting him across, causes a little bit of confusion. You'll see it more here on the next play. Same look here, we shift to the right. We line up in trips, two back, right? Nobody's over here. We shift out there and they're gonna ask 42 to sprint all the way across the field to get to the other side and then try to play on a kid that we already think we're more athletic than. So again, just match up things, game plan things, shift out. Number four is our freshman receiver. They're gonna be manned up on him and he's just straight slot fade. Yeah, not the best throw in the world, but matchup thing again, just trying to create different ways to find the ball to your playmakers. All right, motion with our tight end. So again, out of that two back set, we lined up in stack. Again, I ran everything and anything this year from splits at the sidelines to condensed sets, to stacks, to bunch, to trick formations, anything you can. Um, so it's the same look, but with the stack, we're motioning that tight end, then to run stretch here. Again, this is just to set up our trick play. Line up in stack, motion him in. You'll see our tight end and the first running back both whiff immensely. But luckily our running back was good. Gets a good play, ran this a couple times against Wash U to set up again what we want here, which is our Q throwback. Okay, so the same exact look from the other side. We're gonna motion in the tight end. We're gonna hand that off. He's pitching reverse to the Z and he's trying to throw Q throwback to the quarterback. Again, this was more of a red zone play. You'll see us run it here. He ends up not throwing it to the quarterback. He ends up running it. He gets like a 12, 13 yard gain. Doesn't end up being as good as we thought. But again, becomes exact same look. They think we're running stretch. You'll see the backside end just book it and run with. Doesn't keep contained because he thinks it's stretch again for the fifth time. <clears throat> there you go, motion him in. Hand it off. This is a backup quarterback at receiver, right? He ends up running, what does it say? 11 yard gain, takes out a kid. You know, if you're me, I think he could have, could have thrown this. Again, I understand he's not a quarterback, but I think he's a good athlete that could have handled it if we wanted to. Probably should have been a little closer to the red zone when I called this, but you know, I think he can back pile on this. So that's all right again. Ends up being just a reverse instead of a Q throwback. All right, this one, um, I did not, I, we did run in the game, didn't turn out to be as good as I had hoped. Um, so this will be a practice clip. Same look, we're motioning that tight end. We're getting double swings from the backs to get every eyes, right? You're that Mike and that Will, you're probably working, you see double flare, you're working the curls, depending on what your coverage is. We're essentially doing the same slip screen here, but we're doing it with the tight end. Does that make sense? So my two tackles will be locked up, they'll kick deep. We'll get the same count that we just talked about before with our center and guards release that nose and we should get up three for two or three for three, depending on what the Sam's doing. So it should work out real well. We did complete it and our tight end ended up catching it and just running away from blocking in the game, which is not, not ideal. But this will be clips here in practice. Again, not the best clips of all time here. We motion him in, everybody goes, he turns around like it's a slip screen, dump it to him, follow your blockers. Obviously here we end up throwing the D lineman to the ground so it doesn't work out the best. Obviously we, I was talking with, with Buddha about this quarterback Noah, he likes to put on all the window dressing and pump fake it and get there. But again, just another way I, I became big in trying to use our tight ends and screens and shovel passes, just find different ways to get them the ball. All right, speed. For whatever reason we struggled at traditional speed, whether it was the quarterback taking the angle or a pitch, our pitch relationship. Um, so these were different plays that we did. Speed, different way or different plays we ran off of a speed option look. So this would be our two back set, our two back speed. So we ran two back here and we just ran regular toss. So he'd catch it and immediately just toss to the H and let him try to outrun people. So this is what we called lion, where he would catch it, he would fake the pitch and then we're running speed back the other way. I think with the fake pitch. One, it should get the linebackers at least eyes moving. Uh, but it allowed our quarterback to then have better timing with the defensive end. Um, so this is a, a play on the goal line. I'm arcing that backside tackle. 
depending on what coverage you're in, he may be getting the will, he may be getting the safety. He's going to take most dangerous here. <clears throat> It'll look a little better from the, the other angle here, but again, goal line. We're going to fake the toss, run speed, really good job by our tackle, getting out there and again, get the ball to your best player, get in the end zone. Again, nothing crazy. It ends up just being true speed option, but just trying to put window dressing on it. Teams know we're two back. Teams know we throw out of two back. We do a lot of different things out of this look, just a way to get speed. And again, good job. You were talking about Chuck Houston before. There's Chuck Houston with the, <laughs> I mean, he got the block at least good enough to get in the end zone. But again, that's speed there for you. This is our uh, tight end shovel pass. I mean, this is taken directly from the Chiefs, right? Same thing they do with Kelsey all the time. You're getting power, you're getting the polar around. But we're catching, we're selling speed. DN comes up field, you're pitching underneath to the tight end, right? Same thing, I didn't, didn't necessarily run it in the game here once we lost our tight end. But another way to get your tight end the ball, another way that we're selling like we're running speed. Should be pressing, pressing the DN, pressing the DN. Got the running back, running power, puller. Pitch it underneath. Again, probably more of a goal line play, right? Like I said, you see Travis Kelsey doing it all the time. Yep, absolutely. If we get pressure or if that DN, for whatever reason, is squeezing all the way down where it's not going to be there, he's got a green light to pitch outside. For sure. So, absolutely. So there's different. We have it one where we're running speed with it, or we have like you said, where he's running sprint out and he can throw off it, where it should be the same look. This one we're more looking to pitch to the back versus him protecting. But, yep. No, so every trick play that we run, we will rep once, um, once during our front seven period and then twice during each team, which, I mean, we, pr we probably hit and practice more than anybody else in the country. We do three team periods. We do Skelly. We do front seven three days a week. So, so they're getting six reps of it in team and at least once or twice in front seven, and that's every day. So they're definitely getting it. I mean, we'll draw it up on the board. I I'm a big, as, as many of you are all football coaches, I draw everything on the board. I show it all on film, and then I walk through it on the field just so that – Every kid learns differently and figure out the best way for them to handle it. But yeah, they'll get, in team period, they'll probably get 18 reps of it per week. All right, some of our throwbacks. Um, so in the spring season, COVID season, sprint out was one of our most successful plays. Again, we weren't the best up front. We didn't have the best protection. So it became nice for us to throw um, throwbacks. So this was our base, what we called Notre Dame. This was our most successful uh, sprint out play that we ran all the time. Uh, I think it's a really easy switch route. I think they start bailing. They think it's wheel, and he breaks it back off to the sidelines. I will show a clip of it. Uh, but our easiest sprint out that we completed majority of the time, which allowed me to set up any throwback we wanted. Again, I keep tight end there to seal the end, and we keep back to come and either help with the end or pick up other protection. I know a lot of people run sprint out different ways. I'm a big fan of the waterfall backside for the offensive line. So again, Here's your clip. This was our way to steal. This was our go-to sprint out play. Easy to steal yards, get to the sideline, take what you can get. So it became our bread and butter, which leads me now to a lot of our throwbacks, which we did have a ton of success. Um, this is your base tight end throwback, which I'm sure all of you have seen. We ran it in the red zone on fourth down. Again, we show a big cover four team, huge man team in the red zone. Right? A lot of people want to play man on us, which allows me then to run a lot more trick plays in the red zone goal line. So you'll see this was a nice... Uh, Again, it's the exact same look. Tight end will sell down like he's blocking and sneak out, and you're hoping whoever has got the tight end in man forgets about him, which they do. <coughs> Sprint right, forget about the tight end. Easy throwback for a touchdown. Again, easy to get lost, especially if you're reading the tight end here and you see his first steps. He goes down, sound like he's blocking. Really easy for people to lose him, right? All right, this is our tackle throwback. So when we, I wanted to use this on the goal line, wanted to get one of the big guys a touchdown. Um, this ended up being, we were up in a game and trying to run out the clock and we were struggling to run the ball. 
So I called this on third and five or third and six for a first down for us, which was huge. Um, so we motioned the X across, kind of in that fly motion, get them out of there. Again, a lot of teams are gonna be third, uh, man and third down. A lot of teams, when you send that fly motion with your X, they are gonna blitz that corner off the edge, right? Which is exactly what happens. So we sneak that tackle back. Again, depending on what you're at with the rules, as long as he backpedals and it's a backward throw for the quarterback, you're good. So that's what you'll see here from us. Big play for our, our senior tackle. Again, it's third and five, third and six, something. Yeah, third and five, we're up, we're trying to run out the clock. Struggling to run the ball. Really questionable backwards pass here. I do understand that, but <laughs> they gave it to us. They didn't call it. Hey, I, got, I got a legitimate question. How yeah. did you decide to do this ball? Um, is it like a competition? So uh, yeah. They can't do it because I'm going to have to deal with all the other linemen that I've never threw a pass to. Yep. Ever in their career. It's like, well, I'll put the guy. Like Connor asked all the time. Yeah. Right? Charlie asked, why can't I get a pass? How do you decide to do this ball? Uh, so he was the most athletic and the best hands. Uh, we didn't necessarily have tryouts, but I, I knew for sure. He, he's a smaller tackle, especially C-C-I-W, the kid is 240, 250 pounds. I mean, yeah. he was going to catch and get to five yards, I swear. Yeah. Some of the other guys might not. But, but no, again, a, a great way to get them included. And a legal play, I mean, again, I don't know if he necessarily throws this backwards, but I'll take it. It allowed us to run out the clock and get the win here, which was, was huge for us. So take it. All right, these are more just little gadgets, not necessarily trick plays we got going on. So like I said, I'm a mid-zone spread guy, so this is your normal butt. Um, bubble out of mid-zone where you're reading the end. So what we added was kind of that, what we call a block read from our X receiver. So if you're running to the three by one side and the quarterback pulls it, if that corner ends up bailing to play quarterback, you can toss it over him to the receiver. So that was something we tagged because normally they're gonna have free access backside. Um, but if, again, you're running to the three receiver side and the QB pulls it, and we call block read, it allows you to just steal extra yards or steal an easy touchdown. So first, I believe we have where he keeps it. So we ran it a couple times. We're good. The receiver's now worried. He's trying to sell block read. You see the receiver hopping a little bit, trying to sell like he's faking he's going to block before he takes off. The corner never even looks at the quarterback ever. Never even comes off. Easy touchdown, right? Then... The best clip I had here is from practice, and you see right away we keep it. Corner runs up to play him, right? Dump it off easy. Again, nothing crazy, not a trick play. Something maybe you call once or twice a year, or once or twice a game. But again, if that corner bails up, a super easy way if you have a quarterback that can handle it, make it off the run. All right, this was uh, an RPO that, that our quarterback coach had last year that he ran up at Westcon. Um, this is what we called Bell. So our tight end's coming back across to protect in case the quarterback keeps. Exact same thing here. Um, the special thing here would be with our bubble, now turns into um, a wheel, right? So he's selling bubble, sneaks behind the corner and goes up. So you get the same, same kind of concept that we just had with the block read here. So here against River Falls, you'll see Again, we don't necessarily block the right people here. Our tight end's supposed to be coming for the Sam. But you watch the corner and the safety both run with the bubble that turned into a wheel, just leaving 15, 20 yards of space for our quarterback to take off. Again, you're just stealing. They both run with them. Then you can see here, again, best clip here is practice. We get pressure. He pulls it. Really good block by our tight end getting the seal. And you can see even corner didn't even necessarily bail and try to case on the quarterback. He just got caught flat-footed in that bubble, turned into a wheel up the field. Really easy throw up the field for the quarterback if he doesn't want to run it. Again, just a little essentially RPO, gadget off our RPOs. All right, these are nothing crazy. These are kind of the last two slides. I would just encourage guys, if you're somebody, again, when your base doesn't work, what are you going to do? Right? Your personnel doesn't fit the offense you want to run. How are you going to adjust? So I would run bunch. I would run stack at the numbers, outside the numbers, condensed sets, whatever we can do. Um, so these are just two examples of bunch, especially if you haven't shown bunch on film, right? Maybe they don't know how to line up to it. Just steal what you can take. We line up in bunch in the middle of a game here. And you can see, obviously, there's only one, maybe two guys out here where we can just steal numbers, right? Nothing new for any concept. But I just encourage people to line up in different formations and make them adjust. Worst case scenario, they call timeout, right? Good for us. 
But steel number, obviously we throw a spot here. We got numbers. Take what you can get. And because of that, we'll lead to the next one where we started a game and just came out in unique formations. We did some wildcat stuff that wasn't very successful at some points uh, that I don't have on here. And this again was just one of those unique formations. This again, I stole from Eric Tresky, the, the head coach at Wisconsin Lutheran. But we started out a game in this formation. Obviously they don't have enough guys out there to play spot. Just force them to call timeout, force them to adjust, force them to do something or just stay in it. I remember when I was at Lakeland with Eric Tresky, uh, we played Kalamazoo one year, we lined up like this and they never adjusted. We threw spot six times, drove down the field, scored a touchdown. Right. Make the defense change. Make them adjust to what you're doing. Question. For sure. I mean, obviously, if you're struggling, struggling to run into a five-man box, we're, we're going to have some problems with that. Um, like we heard from earlier, if you are struggling with that aspect, you have to find ways to double team and to find those to try to get matchups that we can. So try to double team with um, while reading somebody, right? Just repping as much as we can. But I mean, at some point, you got to take uh, you got to take your guys and create what we can or create numbers, right? If they're staying in a five-man box, no matter what we do, we got to find some way to create. I go, so I'm not a big inside zone guy, but we had to run it this year, right? And take the one, two yards up the middle, take what we can get. Just so, again, if you're trying to set up something, I mean, you got to still put it on film, right? There's many, many times this season where I ran a play four times, got no yards, negative yards. I mean, we played North Central, we tried four trick plays, got like negative 30 yards. I mean, it's going it's to happen, right? <laughs> the number one team in the country. Uh, but you got to be uh, willing to change what you have. But say you're running those just to set up a play, I would stay sick, stick with it. It's the biggest thing you can be. but. I mean, you, a lot of you guys know a lot more about offensive line play than I do. Um, find ways to get double teams, find ways to read guys. It's all you can really do in the middle. And again, trust me, I've ran everything and anything you can up front and just find what works best for you guys where mid zone was what it was for me forever. Um, and this year, this spring, I mean, it's a ton of gap scheme stuff that we're finally getting a little bit better, a little bit stronger, a little bit bigger as you get older, but a little different for, for us where we can recruit the kids we have versus having the kids you have at, at the high school level. Other questions we got about anything? No? I appreciate it, fellas. Thank you.